So now we'll tell a story about Nepal, a place that's near and dear to my friend Mike Gordon. I was uh, going up to, to uh, a hike and trek and do a little bit of climbing around the Everest region. And in a small village, I saw a basket that was covered with some filthy blankets, and it was off the main path, and we were hiking up to uh, Everest Base Camp. I was walking with my wife, Ann, and another climbing partner of mine, and I said, that's a very interesting-looking basket. Let's take a look. And they said, no, nah, we're too darn tired. We're just going to keep on going. So I went and I looked at the basket, and it had nothing remarkable about it whatsoever. And I went to leave and go back to the main trail, and I honestly felt something as if somebody had put my hand on their shoulder and, and, and urged me to go back to the basket. And I went back to the basket, still nothing very extraordinary, but I took another look, and just as I was going to go back to the main trail, I took one more look, and I saw a forehead with black hair sticking out of the basket. I said to myself, my God, there's a child in that basket. I can't believe that. And so I went over to the basket, and I lifted up the filthy blankets, and a hundred flies flew off the child. Uh, his, both of his feet were up over his right shoulder. Um, uh, he had been scrunched down in the basket, and later that day I learned the story of the child. He was the product of a deaf and mute Hindu woman who had been raped. She could not identify the assailant, so consequently uh, the child became an outcast in the village because... The assailant could have been a low-class Hindu or could have been a Christian person or a Jewish person. Other than that, and in this village, they don't give you the benefit of the doubt. So the child was an outcast. They literally did not agree to this child's existence. They passed him by without looking at him. He was lower and worse than the rest. The mother made her living by digging potatoes out of the ground with her hands. She did her best to care for herself and the child, but she had a very difficult time taking care of herself, much less herself and her child. I made the assumption, if I leave this child here, the child will die in a period of weeks. And so I left a little note with the regional postman, and I said, look, we'll be back in uh, Lukla in two weeks, and if you can get the child there, I will take him down to Kathmandu in the single-engine airplane that we fly in. I will get him ensconced in a hospital, and if the mother wants it, we will find him a foster family so that he can have a better life than he's going to have. I had very little hope that I would see the child two weeks later. Got back to Lukla, sure enough, there was the child, and in the hands of the regional postmaster was a, was a note, not, not written or signed by the village uh, inhabitants, but thumbprinted because there was no literacy in this village, releasing the child in, into my custody. Now I said to myself, my God, now what do I do? So he flew back to uh, Kathmandu, Nepal, which is an hour and a half flight in my arms. We had a car waiting. We took him into the hospital. Uh, the doctor said that he had the absolute worst case of parasites that they'd ever seen in an infant. He had over 4,000 head lice that had uh, uh, buried themselves underneath his scalp, and he passed three eight-inch long tapeworms in the hospital. The doctor, when we took him out four days later, four full days later, said that he had somewhere between two weeks and six weeks to live. We found him a wonderful family, a Sherpa family uh, in Nepal that had tried to have their own child but were unable. Uh, they agreed to take the child in. Uh, they, uh, the child was so weak when they took him in, he could not crawl. If you plopped him on his belly, he just waddled there like a, like a turtle. He couldn't, make, he couldn't crawl whatsoever. They nourished him. Uh, they have educated him. They fed him. They exercised him. And the next one is a picture of that child, my wife and myself in Kathmandu last year. So here was a child who was on death's door. And here is a child who was a wonderful young person, very viable, extremely good athlete, loved soccer, good student, and who knows where his future might end. But it was one little activity of saying, I'm not going to stand up for this. I'm not going to stand up for this child passing away needlessly that we might have, who knows, a Nobel laureate with this child. 